So, a lot of people have been really upset with the plot and discrepancies of the current 2020 season of Earth, which made me want to go back and look at some of the really big plot holes in previous seasons that people kind of forgot about. Let's start with the whole Leif Erikson and his exploration and settlement of North America thing. So there's that whole storyline of the Vikings discovering North America, which the writers just randomly drop and put in the bullshit excuse of the Viking settlers getting killed by Indians. So when they got to Columbus and the rest of the Conquistador storyline, their writers just pretended that the whole Viking stuff never happens, and everyone just sort of forgot about North America. It's like the Knights of Ren, only worse. I think the writers also have a problem of just making some characters too OP. Napoleon Bonaparte's character is the best example of this. First of all, they insert him to the Revolution's arc, when revolutionary France is basically getting dogpiled by everyone and should just logically lose. But then Napoleon magically shows up at this one battle against the Royalist Rebels and pulls off this miraculous victory, which starts his rise up the ranks. Okay, that's fine. But then the dude just starts winning battle after battle and never loses. And somehow he just becomes emperor and takes over most of Europe. By the time he gets to Russia, that is when the riders finally realize that he's just a bit too OP. So they're like, oops, his army froze to death. But the events after this don't even make any sense. The coalition, for some reason, doesn't kill the man and sends him instead to the island of Elba and even makes him prince of the goddamn place. But then he just hops on a boat and heads over back to France. So the new king sends an army to arrest him and the army just shrugs and for some reason joins Napoleon. Then of course Napoleon becomes emperor again and of course a bunch of battles happen and he eventually loses again. This is just a classic 1980s straight to VHS sequel. The original wrapped up the story in a satisfactory manner, but under pressure to capitalize on the popularity, the sequel has to pull some plot shenanigans to get the main character back into a rehash of the original story. And honestly, I also think the writer just gave Napoleon such an underwhelming death. Like seriously, having him die of stomach cancer is just such a stupid way to end his character. Like I don't know, they could have had him get hit by a cannonball or something in the final Waterloo battle. Even that would have been cooler. But really, just lazy writing for that arc. But you know what else really grinds my gears? The whole blimp thing, and how it was just dropped by the writers. Brought into the spotlight during the Great War arc, everyone is into blimps. Blimps can fly super high, much higher than planes, anti-aircraft guns can't shoot them down, planes can't shoot them down, they can even drop planes off them like a floating aircraft carrier. Then, during the interwar arc, nations are establishing strategic helium reserves for the Great War blimps. And they just look really cool, so I think a lot of people really wanted to see what the writers were going to do with them in the next arc. And then the Hindenburg episode happens, which honestly just felt so cheap to me. So like one Nazi Zeppelin has an accident, which just causes everyone to drop the stuff. And also canonically, in universe, it's established that the Hindenburg was using hydrogen, which was a lot more flammable than helium. So like, yeah, it makes sense for them to stop using hydrogen balloons, but why also drop helium ones? Remember the strategic helium reserves? All just wasted, I guess. I know the writers did this as apparently planes were just more interesting in their opinions, but look at all these fan designs for blimps had they just decided to keep them around. And speaking of the Nazis, I think a lot of people agree that the World War II arc is one of the best, and that the Nazis are pretty interesting villains. But when it comes to intelligence and counterintelligence, nobody could be that stupid constantly. Best example of this is the Pujol Garcia subplot. So his character is a double agent for the British, giving false information to the Germans. On occasion, he had to invent reasons why his agents failed to report easily available information that the Germans would eventually know about. For example, he reported that his fabricated Liverpool agent had fallen ill just before a major fleet movement from that port, and so was unable to report the event. To support this story, the agent eventually died, and an obituary was placed in the local newspaper as further evidence to convince the Germans. The Germans were also persuaded to pay a pension to the agent's widow. So like, somehow, this guy is able to invent a 20-man spy ring that gets stuff wrong all the time, and nobody in the pretty massive German spy community ever questions it? Please. I get that this was comic relief by the writers, but I feel like it conflicts too much with the overall dark tone of the arc. So to conclude, this is a great show. There's just some really stupid stuff in previous seasons. And especially now in the current season of 2020. But that could be a whole video of its own. Thanks for patrons Andy Luke, Emerson Salmario Rubio, Link the Best 24, Skylar Weston, Sean Fenerty Loins, and Zyma.